All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a fantabulous break. I hope you had good food, good family, good company, and you stayed safe and protected yourself and others. Um, that is high on our list of things to do, especially this year. Um, I am really excited to be back. I know that sounds like I'm being facetious, but I'm not. Um, Cause I enjoy you. So today we're starting on session IC 14 and it is Monday, the 30th of November, the last day of November. Next time I talk to you, it'll be a whole new month. Um, your I can statement today is I can share the knowledge I have gained about my author. So today's lesson is um, more about the author than about the book. On your daily agenda, you should always be doing your attendance, checking your email and reading every day, whether I say it or not. Um, what you're going to be looking at today are the modules on the shelf. Um, an example of your notebook page a learning farm activity about theme, some test taking tips that will help you out tomorrow and read, 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 read. If you have not finished your book club book, you need to do that ASAP and work on your eye ready because you need to have at least two learning path lessons done every week. There will be no teacher assigned lesson this week. And of course, as always, you can watch the lesson, which, huh, oh yeah, that's what you're doing right now. On the bookshelf, things to do today, learning farm activity, notebook activity. Again, if you haven't signed up for Loop, it's going to cost you in the end because those people that have signed up, well, they're getting extra points and you're not. So if you don't need those points, that's fine. Up to you. Um, and on the bottom shelf, the uh, things that you need to access book club. Remember that under the book club assignment link, that is the spreadsheet that shows you who is in your club. It gives you the link to your Flipgrid. It also gives you the link to where you can read your book online for free. All right, so let's get started. The first thing there is the notebook and um, A lot of you have been doing a great job with these notebook pages. A lot of you haven't done squat. You haven't bothered to do them. Again, you don't feel like you need the points. If you're happy to fail, then I, that's what I'll have to do. Just remember, if you do fail a class, your teacher's not the one who failed you. You failed yourself and you failed your family because they're counting on you to do your best while they're out there doing their best. So don't let yourself down and don't let your family down. Do your work. So your notebook activity is in assignments, but you can get to it right here. And it is IC 14 notebook page. Today, as you read, you're going to be thinking about your author and how he or she gives you insight into his or her personal thoughts, how he or she really feels. All authors include a part of their beliefs and character into their writing. This will be in your book club notebook, not in your investigating characterization notebook. Include your name, the title, the author, and IC14 on your page as always. So on your page, here's what you're going to do. You are going to look for window moments, those moments in your books where you can see and relate to what the character's going through. I strongly recommend that you, you use your main character for this activity. Um, if the author's going to put his self or herself into a book, more than likely, it's going to be put into the main character. So you're going to look for things that you can relate to with the character because those are the things that you would be able to relate to, relate to with the author. Because a little piece of that character is your author. Give me examples from the text that represent that, including quotes, and you'll see what I mean about that in just a moment. Explain how the character feels and how it may give you insight into what the author may be like personally. Now, the important part here is that you must submit the URL to your page for credit. 
and that means submit it in Canvas. Don't email it to me. Submit it in Canvas. All right, so let's look at the example. And it's on, well, it's here. Notebook example, but I already have it open, so I'm going to go right to it. And you've seen my pages like this before. I'm writing about a book called The Loop. Um, the Loop is a really good book. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Um, and I still need to read the other two. Well, I think the, only the second one's coming. I don't know if the third one came out yet or not. I think we're just waiting for the second one to come out in a month or so. Okay, so anyway, my name, the title, the author, session IC 14, and this page is called Insights into the Mind of the Author. So I have a little graphic here of Luca and this person that you see here. I've talked about her before. I've not named her before. I'm going to name her for you today. Her name is Ren. And Ren is the warden. She is that, that keeper who comes and brings him his food. She's also the one who sneaks books into him. And she does a couple of other things for him. Um, but Luke is in love with Ren. But Ren doesn't know it. But he's in love with her because of her kind spirit and her soul. And they have something called the two o'clock club. And at 2 a.m., she lets Luca and several other inmates go to a secret designated area where they can socialize, where they can just hang out, they can talk, they can dance, they can run, they can sing, they can be as free as you could be in a prison for an hour. And it's two o'clock in the morning so that they can kind of get away with it and nobody really knows. But she, if she ever got caught doing that, she would be killed. So Ren is a kind spirit. She is a kind soul. And Luca very much appreciates everything that she does for him. So that being said, Ben Oliver uses internal dialogue in this book to help the reader empathize with Luca. Luca talks to himself a lot because he's all he has. He doesn't have anyone else to talk to, so he talks to himself. But when the chaos begins, and Ren, his warden, becomes a mindless killer. He refuses to let her die. Ren has always been kind to him. Luca tells himself that this is not Ren and he can still help her. But there are two Rens. And despite being wrongfully locked up and put on death row, Luca still has the instinct to be kind and help his warden because he knows there's good in Ren and she's acting out of a drug-induced state. Now, she is either affected by drugs that they've put into her or she has been brainwashed. Either way, she is not in control right now. She's been used as a drone, and her job is to kill. So on the other side, I have some examples. Remember, I said there are two wrens. So these are the two wrens that Luca has seen, the first one. When she first finds out that the chaos is going to happen, she doesn't know what the chaos is. She doesn't know what's going to happen. But she knows it's not good. And she knows it's, it's serious for the inmates. So she says, Luca, listen, I shouldn't tell you this, but a file was sent. But it didn't seem right, Luca. It scared me. And this file, it was sent to basically everyone and then it was taken away immediately, but she got she saw some of it before it was deleted. And it showed some horrible plans for things that were going to happen. And she knew that if Luca did not get out of there now, he would die. And she doesn't want him to die. So that's that's the wren that Luca fell in love with. Then here's the other wren. Ren's face is inches from mine. She smiles down at me and crushes my throat with all of her strength. Because once she has come back as that murderous drone, all she wants to do is kill him. And she's like a savage animal about it. 
She doesn't recognize him. She doesn't see him as even a human. She just knows she's going to kill him. And she's killed others already. But he knows that's not her. He knows the wren he knows is the one up here in the heart. That, that's his wren. He wants to help her. Even to the point where when she's trying to kill him, he doesn't, he, he doesn't really fight back. He just tries to get away from her. And when she reaches out to grab him, the automatic doors close on her arm and cut it off. And instead of leaving her to die, he figures out a way to try to help her. So how does this connect to the author? Well, it's pretty simple. By depicting Luca as a strong yet compassionate character, Ben Oliver gives us a window into his soul and shows his personal strength and heart. Um, you cannot write things like this well if there's not some of that in you. It would be like writing something that you don't know, something you don't understand. So he does a very good job of it. And that tells me that's, that's a little piece of him. That's a little piece of him. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, learning farm theme. Hmm. I appreciate that most of you have signed up for learning farm. What I don't appreciate is that most of you are not doing the learning farm. This is a great. Again, if you want the zero, take the zero. But here's how I want you to do your learning farm. When you sign into learning farm, you need to go to the, the assignment, the current assignment, which for you is going to be theme, determining the theme of a literary text. You have to answer at least 10 questions. If you don't answer at least 10 questions, you get a zero. If you answer eight questions, you get a zero. If you answer nine questions, you get a zero. You can answer more than 10 questions. If you don't like your, your score, you can keep answering questions until you get that average up. That's fine, but you gotta have at least 10 or you get a zero. So when you finish, here's what it's going to show you. It's gonna show you the assignment. Of course, your name is at the top. This is, um, this is my dog, Sam Sam. He, he took this quiz last night. He answered 10 questions. He got a 90%. He's pretty smart. He should have got 100, but I'll talk to him about that. So he's good to go. He's got at least 10 questions. He's at 90%. You're going to screenshot this and turn the screenshot into me. Now, for those of you who don't know, if you're on a Chromebook, you hold the control button. And there's a button, it's usually above like the six maybe, um, and it's a rectangle and two uh, vertical lines, two lines that go up and down. You hold down control and push that button and it takes a screenshot. You know you've got it because it says right here, screenshot taken. You can copy it to your clipboard if you want, if you want to paste it someplace, but it's already gone to your drive. It's already there. So what you want to do is go to your drive and make sure that you can see it. Okay, here's my screenshot. I just took it. I'm going to open it because I want to make sure that I can see it. One of the problems that I've seen happen is some of you will send me a screenshot of something and it's just a black bar. So I want you to go and actually look at your screenshot and make sure that it worked that I can see your name, that I can see the assignment, that I can see how many questions you ask, and that I can see what your score is, okay? Once you see that, you can leave here. And you're gonna go back. Whoops, let me go to the right place here. You'll click on learning farm and it's going to take you to the learning farm activity form. It's going to take you to, let me go here first. Okay. It says, go to learning farm. You you have to answer 10 questions. And then it says, you're going to go to this link and complete the Google form. So when you click on, go to this link, it's going to take you to, let me submit another one because I need to show you this form. It's not very long. It wants your last name. 
your first name. And then it says, upload a screenshot of your score. Well, you took that screenshot and you've already checked, you know it's good. So click add file. And you want to upload that screenshot that you just took. So I'm going to click on recent. Here's my screenshot. Click on it. Oh, sorry, open. You can double click it or you can open it. Um, there it is. Click on upload. And here it shows up. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is click this button. Always click this button, send me a copy. That way if I say I didn't get it, you have proof, you can show it to me. Okay, and then hit submit and you're done. So that's how you turn in your learning farm assignment. If you don't understand, I want you to rewind this video and watch it again. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is tomorrow. You're going to be taking the MOI, the middle of the year iReady diagnostic. Um, hopefully you will show some growth. But I want to show you this. These are things you know. Um, but you don't necessarily use. These are some easy strategies you can use when you take multiple guest tests. First of all, read the entire question. If you don't read the whole question, you don't really know what they're asking you. Answer the question in your mind first, if you can, before you look at the answers. And then when you look at the answers, if you see your answer, you can go, oh, I bet that's it. It's just another layer of support. Eliminate wrong answers. There's always going to be one or two answers you know couldn't possibly be right. So just get rid of those. And that, that ups your odds. Process of elimination. Same thing. Eliminate your answers. Process of elimination. Get rid of the ones that couldn't be right. And then get rid of the ones that are less correct. There's only one right answer. There's usually one kind of right answer. And that's where you get confused. Select the best answer. One might be good, but another is going to be better. Read every answer option. Don't just read A and B and go, oh, it's B, because it's probably not. Make sure you check all your options. And answer any questions that you can before you even start. I mean, go to the beginning of the test, and, it, and if you can, go through all the questions and anything you can answer without even reading the test, do it. It might be a vocabulary question and you know what the word means. Answer that question. Get it out of the way. It's less work for you to do down the road. And if push comes to shove and you really truly aren't sure, just make an educated guess based on what you read, not on what you remember. Because your memory is terrible. I keep telling you that. We remember big concepts but we don't usually remember the finer details. That's why you need to go back and look. You usually think that, you know, once you've read it, oh, well, that's it, I don't need to go back, I know it. You don't, don't trust your memory, it's terrible. I'm telling you, it's terrible. So use some of these tips tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, I bet you dollars to donuts, it will help you. I'm confident in it. All right. So other than that, you should be reading your book club book if you haven't finished it. 
Uh, make sure you get this learning farm activity and this notebook activity done. There will be no ELA classes tomorrow, Tuesday, December 1st. You will be taking your iReady MOY during that time. So whatever time you have my class, that's when you should be taking your iReady test. You have tomorrow and you have Wednesday to do it. I will be posting an assignment tomorrow, but there will be no class. So be looking for an assignment, but there will be no class. And as always, you can watch this lesson, which is, you know, what you're doing right now. So you already know that part. Um, if you have any questions, I will be in the Google Meet tomorrow morning until probably about 10 o'clock. Um, other than that, you can get me by email. So if you have questions, just contact me and I will try to help you as best I can. Other than that, I will see you soon and uh, do your best tomorrow. I'm rooting for you.